So what if you want to just get away from it all? For that, achieving orbit isn't going to be enough. You're interested in escaping altogether. To approach this question, it's useful to look at the energy of an object in a gravitational field. As you recall, gravitational potential energy near the surface is just mgh. If you wanted, for example, to lift a thousand kilogram car one meter at the surface of Earth, you would have to exert 9810 newtons of force over that meter, doing 9810 joules of work. But not everything exists near the surface of Earth. If you were two Earth radii away instead of just one, and you wanted to push that same thousand kilogram car one meter farther away from Earth, the work required would just be one fourth what it is at Earth's surface. And if you were 10 Earth radii away, the work required would just be 1 100th what it is at Earth's surface. As you get farther and farther away from Earth, the less work is required to push that car a meter farther away. And at the hypothetical infinite distance, gravity wouldn't be pulling back at all. It's at this distance that we've set the zero for potential energy. And since the zero for potential energy is infinitely far away, anything closer than infinitely far away has less potential energy than zero, which means it's negative. The general expression for the gravitational potential energy of anything interacting with anything else still depends on the two masses and their separation, just as MGH does, and it accounts for the definition of the zero point at infinity. So officially, the potential energy U is negative G times M, big M, times little m, divided by r. Now if you're sitting on the face of the Earth, but you want to have zero potential energy, which is to say you basically want to get away from Earth's gravitational grip, you'll have to acquire enough kinetic energy upward to cancel out your rather large negative energy associated with existing on Earth's surface. This makes your total energy zero. In equation form, what you want is for one half times your mass times v squared 1 half mv squared to equal g times the mass of the Earth times your mass divided by r. A bit of rearranging, and you can find that you can escape Earth, but only if you go at least the square root of 2 times g times m, Earth's m, divided by r. That's the escape velocity for Earth. And every object with mass has a minimum speed that you must go to be able to escape its gravitational field. For Earth, that's about 11.2 kilometers per second up. It's considerably easier to escape the Martian moon Deimos because its mass is so small. In fact, 20 kilometers per hour would get you off the surface of Deimos, which means if you had a ramp and some really grippy tires, you could literally jump a bicycle off that moon. Getting away from something like a neutron star, though, whose mass is about 500,000 times that of Earth, and whose radius is about 5 thousandths that of Earth, that combination of size and mass yields an escape velocity for a neutron star that is about 10,000 times that of Earth, or about 112,000 kilometers per second, which is a pretty hefty percentage of the speed of light. And as for black holes, by definition, their escape velocity is equal to or greater than the speed of light. And if you're unlucky enough to be at the surface of one of those, you'll never be able to escape, no matter how much you want to.